This bill reduces the deficit by $23 billion, and it does not raise taxes, and it cuts spending in a smarter way. From the outset, we knew that if we forced each other to compromise a core principle, we would get nowhere. That is why we decided to focus on where the common ground is. So that's what we've done. That means to me a budget agreement that reduces the deficit without raising taxes and replaces some of the arbitrary across the board spending cuts with smarter permanent reforms that pay for this relief. The House budget reflects our ultimate goals. It balances the budget within 10 years, it pays off the debt, but I realize that that is not going to pass in this divided government. I see this agreement as a step in the right direction. In divided government, you don't always get what you want. That said, we still can make progress toward our goals. I see this agreement as that kind of progress, as a step in the right direction. Instead of the arbitrary cuts, we make smart, targeted reforms. We eliminate waste. We stop sending cri checks to criminals. We cut corporate welfare. We reform some mandatory programs. And we start to make real reforms to these autopilot programs that are the drivers of our debt in the first place. I think this agreement is a clear improvement on the status quo. This agreement makes sure that we don't have a government shutdown scenario in January. It makes sure that we don't have another government shutdown scenario in October. It makes sure that we don't lurch from crisis to crisis. It also allows Congress to finally exercise the power of the purse. We're both from the legislative branch. The Constitution says that the legislative branch should ex exercise the power of the purse. We want to reclaim that from the administration instead of having all of these continuing resolutions. This also shows that we can work together to get our government functioning at its very basic levels. That we think is a step in the right direction. That we think gives us some confidence. That brings some normalcy back to our government. I want to take a moment to thank Senator Murray. She's a tough and honest negotiator. She's fought hard for her principles every step of the way. And I want to commend her for her hard work. All of the summary documents and the legislation will be texted, uh, we, will be placed upon our budget websites uh, by the end of the night. And with that, I'd like to offer Senator Murray. Thank you. Well, for far too long here in Washington, D.C., compromise has been considered a dirty word, especially when it comes to the federal budget. Over the past few years, we have lurched from crisis to crisis and from one cliff to the next. And when one countdown clock was stopped, it wasn't too long before the next one got started. That uncertainty was devastating to our fragile economic recovery. The constant crisis cost us billions of dollars in lost growth and jobs, and the continued across-the-board cuts from sequestration were forcing our families and communities to pay the price. So I am very proud to stand here today with Chairman Ryan to announce we have broken through the partisanship and the gridlock and reached a uh, bipartisan budget compromise that will prevent a government shutdown in January. Our deal puts jobs and economic growth first by rolling back sequestrations, harmful cuts to education and medical research and infrastructure investments and defense jobs for the next two years. Now, I know there were some people who thought these cuts should continue, but I'm glad that we increased these key domestic investments and that we averted the next round of scheduled cuts to military programs, bases, and defense jobs in our country. This deal builds on the $2.5 trillion in deficit reduction we have done since 2011 and continues the precedent that we set in the fiscal cliff deal that sequestration shouldn't be replaced with spending cuts alone.